you're finding it hard to stay positive while at home in quarantine or self-isolation, well, today we are going to flip that switch because we are going to talk all about positivity. And who better to talk about positivity than the queen of positivity in my mind, Miss Sulan Choi. And the reason I wanted Sulan on the show today is because I've known Sulan for over 20 years. She's been practicing for over 22 years and she's a holistic practitioner. And every day, I get on my WhatsApp a note of positivity, and not even one. I can get two, three, four notes of positivity. So I thought you would be so perfect for the show, Sulan. Let's talk positivity. Let's flip that switch if we're watching too much of the news or we're speaking to people who are, not, you know, not no fault and you know, no fault to them, but maybe more negative than what we like to be hearing. I thought let's flip that switch and have you on the show today so we can really help people turn it around and be more positive. So welcome to our show, Sulan. Thank you, Andrea. I'm very happy to be on your show. Thank you. <laughs> so tell us, how are you staying positive? We need the tips. Well, first of all, I don't see it as this big thing that we're in. This is every day is a spiritual journey. So we just take one day at a time. We think about the now. And I truly, truly think about this moment. What was my last thought? But sometimes, you know, my last thought was, Oh, I gotta get ready. I'm I'm under pressure. Or well, my last thought was, you know, should I wash my hair today or not? Those are some of those trivial things, but as much as I can, my last thought is, what did I promise myself to do for today? And I'll I might just get write about three phrases that I'll anchor to for the day. Just three phrases, sometimes two. And I'll just remind myself, okay, today and just five minutes ago. Did I, uh, did I remind myself to say this phrase? So what are some examples of some of those phrases? Um, did I smile? Did I remember to send a big hug through my, my WhatsApp or my text <laughs> to someone? Did I remind myself that I'm going to infect the whole world, every single one in this world with my optimism and my positivity? Those are some of the positive things that I think about. Well, I love that you're saying, you know, reaching out to other people, because especially at this time, some of us may be hearing from people, but not all those messages are, are positive, right? So it's been your mission, and I know this is your mission, to really reach out on a regular basis to be able to send those notes of positivity. And I know that you also have strategies, and I've known you for over 20 years now or around that time, and you've helped me so much in terms of just mindset, ways to think. I mean, one of my favorite things about that you've taught me over the years was when things are happening and you'd be like, it may be, you know, it's unbelievable. And you would say it's maybe unbelievable for most people, but it's absolutely believable for me. And it's just those little Sulanisms, I'm going to call them, that we're able to kind of think about in a different way to help us stay more positive, to help us stay more centered and to keep us focused on where we're going. So what are some other examples that you've shared with your clients? And you have many clients who are a very busy holistic practitioner that you've been able to help inspire them during this time. What are some things that you're doing? Okay. So are you ready? So one of them is I call it my four step neutralizer because it takes about four steps. And first of all, it has to be simple and easy. It'll take maybe two seconds to, you know, 10 seconds to do. So step number one is to take a few deep breaths because you're not going to do anything without taking a deep breath. So just take some deep breaths. And when you do, you know, you can read all about it. Anyone can tell you that it can reset your, your vibrations. And it just makes you go, oh, and deep compress. So take a few deep breaths. And then the second thing is to say, stop. You can say, stop. You can say, delete. You can say, hold it right there. You could say, I don't want it. But in your mind, you have to know that you have a choice. You have to know that you're the one who's going to be forceful. Other things are forcefully trying to um, impinge on your life. But instead, you're going to be forceful at, at pushing back and say, stop it stop it right now you could even imagine if you're on the computer a lot you know when you do something wrong whether you're doing a design or composing a letter and then you go oh that was a wrong word or wrong sentence and you put your mouse over it 
um, and you 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 know you you cover it and then you press the the, the delete. That's so satisfying. So delete it, delete, stop, hold it right there. You can even think about the stop sign. But you know, I'm telling you all this takes me minutes to tell you, but you're just going to do it in uh, a millisecond, in a yeah. megasecond. One of the things, one of my favorite things that you taught me is a big X. So, and, and we're talking about rephrasing things. Yeah, exactly. Like kind of imagining that big X of like, if we have a negative thought and it just imagining it in our mind, uh, uh-uh, no, it's like, nope, not going there. Like think of family feud when they have the big X on the screen, right? It's like that yeah. immediate thing. And then once you have that big X or you press your delete, then what do we do? Do we put a positive spin on it? Definitely. Because you can't just take the garbage out. You can't take or your old furniture's out without thinking, hmm, that thing still looks pretty good. I'm going to take it back. So immediately that you've said, stop, you got to refill your mind with something that you really want. So I call it making a movie of your mind. So in this movie, you've got to try to make it so um, imaginative, so creative, so, so vibrant that it might even win the Oscars. <laughs> so, so you should think about the way you think of you and another person, not just yourself in this, in this visualization. It's got to be you and another person. The other thing is that you've got to think about it in the future. So when I say in the future, it could be tomorrow. It could be, you've got to think about something that's going to happen tonight. It could happen in 10 minutes time. It could happen next year, but something in the future. And in this vibrant movie that you've seen in your mind, you think about you having a conversation with this other person. And it could be a stranger. It could be your best friend. It could be with me. I tell this to my clients. And where the both of you, the two of you, you're nodding. You're smiling at each other. You could be laughing. You could be sharing a really lovely, lovely wonderful story. So you're, you're, the two of you are participating in some kind of a dialogue, but let the words be just very simple because you're gonna do it in your mind and nobody is asking you to write a huge, you know, uh, movie dialogue. It's just little things and nodding, smiling. And especially where you could imagine that the person is giving you a few compliments or saying, you're right, you're right. Or, oh my goodness, that's exactly what I would like to learn. So you, you've got to imagine the other person telling you this. So do you want an example, for instance? Yes, please. Okay. Love to have one. So, for instance, let's say right now you may have a cold and you might think, oh my goodness, I've got the sniffles. What do I have? And do I have the dreaded CV? You say, stop right there. Take a few deep breaths, sorry. And then you say, stop, stop. That's not what I want. Delete it. Im- immediately, you could imagine yourself talking to a friend on the phone tonight because you're doing your social distancing and um, you could say to them, you know, I wasn't feeling well, but I did something. And after doing that something, I'm actually feeling good. I'm feeling optimistic. Now, nobody has, nobody says that you can't do that positive visualization at another time frame. So you can now imagine the next morning and you imagine waking up and you're talking again to another friend and you're saying, you know, yesterday I didn't feel good, but now I'm feeling really good. And then imagine your friend on the other line smiling at you and saying, what did you do? You must tell me because I like what you've just done. So please tell me and please share with me. So something like that, you know, you've got to think of some conversation with someone. And I think the more that we're positive, the more people want to be around you. And I, I, I don't know how many people you send out your WhatsApp messages, but I'm guessing you're getting a lot of feedback from people. Please do it. Please do it. Please keep sending it. Because what I find with you, which is great, is you don't allow us to go into that negative place. And if we do, you're like, okay, you acknowledge it. And now let's flip it and let's talk about the positivity. So it's, it's, it's such a good way to live and to think about things, especially during this time when, like you were saying, maybe some people's mind go to that, you know, that negative place of, oh my gosh, uh, you know, I, I have this sniffles or I have the cold and maybe it's that. So I think, I think this is really good and really timely. Oh, sorry. Would be yeah. just to trust and just leave it alone. Seriously. And, you know, my analogy is imagine if you had spent some time in the kitchen baking bread 
and you've been kneading it and making the bread and you know you've been doing your best to make this dough a really good dough and then you put it in the pan then you put it in the oven set the timer and then you have to let it go you've got to just forget about the bread baking even though you know in your mind that it's going to take an hour or an hour and 15 minutes to bake that bread so you've got to just trust that you've set the time right that you've done all the prep that you you've done and just let it go so so that's step four and you can just you know do all that in seriously in about two seconds which is why it's good okay why don't we just recap those four steps and then I'm going to move on to my next question. So number one, take some deep breaths. Number two, say stop or hold it right there or I refuse it or exit out. Number three, do a visualization into the future where it's not just you, but with someone else. And number four, trust and just let it go. I love it. Okay. Okay. EFT. I know that you love using EFT. Can you explain what it is and how that can possibly help people now? EFT. So I'm sure most of um, you would take a shower every day. Some people even take a shower twice a day in the summertime because they've just done some sports or they just very, feel very sweaty after work and they come home and they want to clean themselves out. EFT helps to clean your emotions. And I find it surprising that people will want to clean their body out in a physical manner, but they don't clean their body in an emotional, psychological way. So one of the best things that is with EFT is it cleans your mind. And it cleans, much, it cleans out a lot more than you think it needs to be cleaned out. And another wonderful thing about EFT is that it's free. Once you've learned it, and there are plenty and plenty and plenty of practitioners on the internet, and especially on YouTube, who uh, are willing to teach you how to do EFT. So once you've accessed a few um, episodes of EFT, you like the sessions, you've learned some of it, you can do it anywhere and everywhere. Another positive about EFT is like self-hypnosis. Um, I think some people are afraid to be hypnotized by someone else. But here, you're hypnotizing yourself without putting yourself under. There's no way you could put yourself under. And I can tell you that I EFT while I'm driving. I've been doing it for, I, I think I discovered EFT about 20 years ago. And I've been, um, you know, EFT while I drive. And I can't say that I've had any accidents. So I guess it's not hypnotizing in the true sense of the word hypnotization. It's more just, it's, it's working on ourselves psychologically. It is. And it's reframing. So when you clean out, but so one of the positives about EFT is it allows you to express how you're feeling and what's bothering you. Because most of the time it's true. Don't talk about it because the more you talk about it, the more you just worry. So why talk about it? But the beauty about EFT is there's a, big safety net and in fact you're encouraged to say things that you wish you could have said to someone else but you know you can't so EFT gives you this platform this forum to um to say out loud but what you're saying it while you're tapping and the important thing about this tapping is that they're all very 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 important acupuncture points hmm. and as you're tapping on these points you are neutralizing and erasing those thoughts. And I challenge any of you to try to think about something that's bothering you, whether you're afraid, you're fearful, you're angry, you're resentful, you're confused. Just keep saying it and keep tapping. Keep tapping for at least a minute, which is about 60 seconds. And then see how you feel about those emotions after you've been tapping those negative emotions for about a minute. Now, immediately after you've tapped and with what we call neutralized um, the, or erased the negative thoughts, you then start to say some positives. Now, at first, it won't be so simple because you're, maybe you're not used to saying those positive words, but again, watch enough YouTubes and write down the phrases that you like that that particular practitioner has suggested write them down, memorize them. Memorize at least two or three 
of those phrases. And, you know, I'm sure most of you are extremely smart. I'm sure smarter than I am. So you can memorize two or three phrases over two or three days. And the next few days, you can keep the ones you truly like and then add another one in and then add, and add another one. And before you know it, within a month, you'll have a whole closet full of positive phrases for yourself. And we can put some phrases below too, because I do think the phrases are important. And for those of you who aren't familiar with EFT, it's emotional freedom technique. You can Google it, come on, you're on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can look it up. And like Sulan said, there are a lot of ways that we could, or a lot of sayings that we can do and incorporate that into our daily life. Sulan, I do want to talk a minute about how we speak and whether how we speak to ourselves or speak to others and the amount of emotion that we put into it. Can you can you explain in an easy way what that is? So for example, if we're, you know, I'm a very passionate person. I just speak with passion all the time. It's just who I am. And I was born that way. And some of the times when I'll say something, whether it's positive or negative, it comes out very passionate. And you would say, okay, well, just be careful how you say certain things, especially on the negative end. Explain what that does and how it kind of can help us overall. Okay. So, um, let me just show you how some people in the passion will say, you know, that happened to me. Wasn't that crazy? And I say, hold it right there. Can we just change that word from crazy to wonderful? Really, there are that many words in the English dictionary. And if you're not sure how to, you know, rephrase the words, we have, what are those called? Those, you know, dictionaries, those synonyms. You know, you, you, we have plenty of those dictionaries and it's even on, on, you know, on the internet. So I would say, think about wonderful. It was glorious. It was a miracle. It made me smile. You don't have to say crazy. And why I'm saying this is because so many people I come across will say, oh my God, I had such a crazy day. And this is in the negative, you know. Oh, and this happened, that might happen. Oh my gosh. And they don't realize that maybe the day before or the month before or even six months before, a year before, they've been saying so many of those words crazy and they hadn't realized it. And so today, the sum total of the crazy day was the sum total of a week, a month, a year ago. So it's best not to use those words. And so I often tell my clients, well, we do it in the session, but you can definitely put a list of, let's say five words that you didn't realize, but you say constantly, not constantly, but you know, quite often per day or per week. And then challenge yourself to write three different words, what we call the opposite positive. So, you know, some people will say, oh, that was nuts. Again, do you want nuts? Or do you want miracles? Do you want smiles? I love that. Mm -hmm. I love now, that. Um, for that, can I tell you that I have a list that I have my clients write down and it is what I say this is the way th these are the parameters of how you'd like to live your life or how to make decisions so number one is simple and easy so write that down simple and easy another one joyful pleasurable and fun hmm. that's another form Another one is safe, comfortable, and healthy. Hmm. Another one is fast and efficient. Sorry, it's my English, fast and efficient. And another one is low cost to no cost. And, and an addendum to that is, and if I have to pay good money for it, I will feel that I can afford it, and I think it was money well spent. Another one, is win-win. Actually, it should be win-win-win. It will help me win as I help someone else win, as I help the universe win. As well as, as I help the universe win, it will help me win, that will help someone else win. As well as, as I help someone else win, it will help me win and help the universe win. I love that. And another one is, I will feel proud of sharing my success story with someone. And another one is, I will be pleasantly surprised when someone or some people want me to teach them how I did exactly that. 
or the unbelievable one. Wow, that's so unbelievable. No, it may be unbelievable for most, but it's absolutely believable for me. That yes. is an all-time favorite. And I know I mentioned that at the beginning, but <laughs> truly, so I remember calling you from, I was, I think, on a media trip to Chicago one year, several years ago, and I used that exact, like I, something really cool happened. And I'm like, oh my God, Suan, it's absolutely, you know, it's maybe unbelievable for other people, but it's absolutely believable for me. And, you know, just thinking about that, and if you, it, it makes a lot of sense, right? Why is it unbelievable? It's not unbelievable. It's absolutely believable. And mm. I think it's the small tweaking of that, of that language, right? Of whatever language you speak. Yes. Small yes. tweaks of making it from that negative to that positive. And it makes a world of difference. Well, that, what you just said is right, because we've got to understand that we, every one of us have options. For the longest time, maybe, you know, the way we've lived, the people who you know, affected us, maybe just work or the pressure of work or just, you know, having a big family and you're responsible for so many people. You've been thinking there's a certain way of doing it. And often it's people who have influenced you as well as what you've formulated in your mind. But that doesn't mean it's the be all and end all. There's many, many options. And I'm hoping that today, your biggest takeaway from this is that you have options. You have things that you can do with your mind because I really truly believe when someone tells you, whether it's a professional person or a friend of yours says, you know, shake out of it, you're thinking negative, shake out of it. I think that's just a big slap in your face. I think that's an insult. I think that person should show you, lead you, give you ex some examples to open up your mind that these are the things that you could do because again, Everybody have to understand that based on what I know today or I knew five minutes ago, an hour ago, I didn't know what I know now. So today I have more options and please have that as your take home um, lesson. I love that. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about before we end the interview is the universe like you were talking about, you made a mention of it, but also manifesting because for many of us now we're home. Some of us have more time than others. And when we, when we come out of it, because it's going to end, when we come out of it, what are some things that we could start doing right now to manifest what we want for our future? Okay. So the best thing is to make a list. And what I call be like Walt Disney. Be like Hans Christian Andersen and make up your own fairy tale story. Be like Cinderella and say, I really want to go to the ball, even though I don't know how I'm going to get to the ball. So start making your list. And whether your list is just one item or 20 items, it's, it's your core. Make that list. And first of all, just write down. And you could, if you're stumped, you know, you're stumped and you've never done this, just write it in the genre of what you want, such as my career, my finances, my family, my relationship. Just write that. Next add in that list I gave you. I'd like it to be simple and easy. I'd like my, my financial life to be fun, joyful, and pleasurable. I'd like to be able to get along with, on my career fast and efficiently. Add a few things in. Then put a few timelines. So think about what I said about the four-step neutralizer. And think about if you were to make a movie of your life um, and you're telling someone about how your movie, how, how your life has has um, prospered since coming out of self-isolation a year down the road, six months down the road, six weeks down the road, what would you like to say to that person? So make your list. Now, once you have that list, another thing that you can do is do the mirror exercise. Some people will find it quite hard to look in the mirror, but that's okay if that's your first time. I did my first time about... Um, I think it was about 22 years ago. No, 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 it wasn't 20. I think it was 26 years ago. And of course it was hard, but now I don't see it as that. So you just have to plow through it. So you look at yourself in the mirror, eyeball yourself. Oh, and it's best, you don't have to, but it's best to do it first thing in the morning and last thing at night. Um, and if you can only do it one time a day, then you do it one time a day. And if you're sharing a place with someone, you could hide, you know, you can lock yourself in the bathroom, turn on the tap, keep flushing the toilet, so, or turn on the radio so no one can hear you. There's always a way. Don't ever give me an excuse. So 
you look in the mirror and you eyeball yourself and you look at that person to persuade that person. I'm telling you what I want to happen and I'm going to justify it. So first of all, you could do half a minute to a minute and you just look in the mirror and you say, I love you. I love yourself. I love myself. I love me. I love you, Sulan. I love myself. I love Sulan. I love you. I, we love ourselves. I love you. Say that for half a minute to a minute. And then the other half a minute to a minute, you can start to ch uh, chant your list. And you could take one item at a time. You don't, I mean, if you have a big list, don't do everything. Just choose one item at a time and, you know, one genre at a time and just keep saying that. And then you just do it 30 days. That's, why, that's one th Why is it important that we look in the mirror and say, I love you? I might be wrong, but when I read that um, several people said the eyes are the window to your soul, I decided to believe in it. And, they, and definitely is what you believe. So if you don't believe in doing that, then don't. I just like to do anything that's powerful. And because I've done this several times in the past, and now I realize it really does work for me, I highly promote it. And just because also I'm very lucky to have so many clients who follow my instructions and it helps them. So I know it does work for many, many, many people. It may not work for you. But I always think that if you practice and practice and practice, you probably discover things that you never knew that you're capable of. So one of the process is the fact that, you know, you're looking at your own soul and there's no distraction. The other thing is, you know, we often try to do things to please people or to justify to people or just to prove things to people. We try to be cheerleader for people, for our family, um, for our, our spouses, for our children, for our colleagues. But we don't do that for ourselves. So it's time to look in the mirror and be your own cheerleader, be your own teacher. Mm, very well said. And another thing we could do too is visualization. One of the things that I've started doing in the morning, as soon as I open up my eyes, I show gratitude. I say all my gratitude. And then I also visualize things that I want to happen to manifest. So mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I think all of that information is, is really helpful. Yes. And, and then I often add the EFT with it because no one says that you have to do EFT as an island, as you know, EFT on its own in isolation to anything else. You can combine it. So I often like in the morning, I'll take a few deep breaths and I think about you know, what I want to do. And I might just tap without even knowing if there's anything wrong. And by the way, you don't have to only do EFT when something's wrong. It's actually best to do EFT on a daily basis. So what we call best to um, prevent a fire than to actually put out the fire. It takes a lot more effort to put out the fire. So I'll do my EFT. And then just like you said, you know, there's a visualization. So to make it more powerful, I'll tap. Hmm. I'll just tap during the visualization. Which is great. And then... And then, you know, do mantras. And another thing is you can start your own little group among your friends and, you know, on a daily basis, encourage your friends and, and volunteer. You know, today I remember to do this because maybe your friends go, oh, she did it. She may want to up, one up you, which is fine. Go ahead and one up your friends in this case. So then you'll, you know, you'll say, oh, well, she did it. Well, I'm going to do it. Maybe I'll do it two, two times. So, or... You, you read one of your friends do something, you could go, oh, what a great idea. I've forgotten to do that. So it's always wonderful to start your own group. Is there anything else that you feel we didn't cover today that can help our listeners and our viewers remain positive? So many things. So one of the things that um, I've reunited with is Brain Gym. It's been something that's been going around for, oh my gosh, you know, 30 years more maybe. And it's so simple. It's just a matter of doing exercises where you're crossing your left, um, to your, so your right arm over to the left and even your legs and then, and then the other way. So you, you'll either, you know, coordinate so that your uh, right arm is touching your left leg or your left arm is touching your, your right leg. There's a whole bunch of those things. You can YouTube it, find things like that because it can open up your brain, and, and also learn new skills. Definitely learn new skills in the digital age.
because if anyone is like me and I'm in my 50s, I don't know what the 20-year-old, 30-year-old, and even other 50-year-old know. But this is a time during our quiet isolation time to schedule lessons. And again, you can, there's so many ways to learn, learn new skills. And then when you think, well, my brain is not up to it, hey, do the brain gym. One thing that, you know, if we look at silver linings, one thing that I've really found is that I am taking the time to take courses, learn things I didn't have the time to do and kind of brush up on certain skills that I've always wanted to do and kind of taking care of that. So I, I love that you're saying that because it's true mm-hmm. that we yes. have a little bit, maybe more time now to do it. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to put a plug in. I think this is something that you know, and you love brain tap. Mm-hmm. I love, 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 love that, that app. I think it's what they call the easy man's way of meditation. And I'm up for anything that's easy and simple. Um, it's an app that, uh, you know, you can plug in and you can try some freebies and then you can pay a, a, a monthly subscription. But it's, it's, they even give you the flexibility of how much you want to pay, you know, monthly. And I just love it because most of the meditations are 15 minutes to maybe 25 minutes yeah, they're short. and they're short and I swear to you I think you could fall asleep while doing it and you'll still get tons out of it and then I have to say one more thing I'm sorry about this oh, but no, please. So, yeah. when, so so many clients will say to me I tried meditation and I've been doing it I love it I think I love it but I'm not getting it yet I don't get in the zone and my answer is don't try to to be in the zone just do it the fact that you're doing it, and even if you fall asleep doing it, you're getting something out of it. But that, even that little negativity of, oh, I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know if I'm as good as my teacher. Don't say that. Everybody's different. And, you know, I was reading this uh, book uh, called The Outliers, and the author says he figured out that some of these very, very successful people, if they did something, by the time that they've done something, 10,000 hours or more, they're successful. Now, you and I don't need to be the next Bill Gates. We don't need to be the, the, that person who founded the internet. We just want to be successful in our own right. Just try to, to do something that will average eventually 100 hours in your life. That's all you have to do. So just do enough EFT, do enough positive thinking, do enough changing the, the words that you used, used to, to, to do and see if you can one-up it and turn it into the opposite positive and just keep adding in your hours. Yeah, that's well said. I love it. Well, Sulan, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. I thank you so much, Andrea, for giving me the opportunity to infect even more people, people I don't know with my optimism. Thank you so much. I love it. Thank you for being on our show. And to all of you, thank you for watching. If you got value out of today's show and podcast, please share this with your friends and family because the more you share, the more we'll show you care and the more people will will get to infect, like Sue Lance says, to infect, to, to spread our positivity and spread our message. So thank you so much. Please subscribe to our channel. And if you're here on YouTube, please, please hit that notification bell so that you'll know every single time we launch a new video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay well.